All righty. So today we're looking, we're going to start our look at the Indus Valley civilizations. And one of the things that we need to make note of, by the way, uh, Danielle, could you please hit the left light um, for us, please? Thank you, sir. Uh, when we're talking about India, uh, no hood, sir. We're, okay. Um, we're, we're talking about the context of it in ancient history. So when we talk about India, we're also talking about what is present day Pakistan. Um, so, um, we're, we're lumping them all together because it's only until modern history, 1948, I think, where the two separated. So, um, just note that, um, really right now we're actually talking about what, what's modern Pakistan, but this is all part of our India unit because for almost all the time, that was part of India. Okay. So this is um, a look at the map. So this is where we're talking about. We're talking about the Indus River Valley. So this is going to be the Indus River. We're going to see there are going to be several tributaries going into it. And here's a look at what we see some of the land like today. So looking at that picture, can anyone deduce what one of the awesome things that people are going to be able to do along the Indus River? What is something that people are going to be able to do along the Indus River? Which is super important for like people surviving things. Danielle? Uh, yep, Danny just said farming. So yeah, agriculture. This is gonna be a place where they're able to grow lots of food. And it's one of the reasons why people live there. Some of our oldest world civilizations are from the Indus Valley, and it's because it was so stinking good to farm at. Because people like to eat. So let's look a little bit more at the geography. One of the things, first off, we're going to notice there are going to be many mountains in the Indian subcontinent. We see that we have the Hindu Kush mountains over here that are going to be bordering the Indus Valley. We have the Himalaya mountains, which we know are the tallest mountains in the world over here with Mount Everest, um, I think, being there. We also have the Western Ghats and the Eastern Ghats. So we see India is actually pretty surrounded by mountains, which is going to give it a lot of protection. We're going to see that India historically is not going to be invaded a lot. So that's going to be really good for the people who live there. These protections, this isolation that they're going to have. Oh, I went through that right there. So like I said, we've got the Himalaya mountains in the north. Now, uh, present day country of Nepal has uh, is like in the Himalaya mountains, but we see the Himalayas are going to still affect India because of the border. And we have the Ghats around the coast. Now, one of the things that's going to affect India are what's called monsoons. And those are gonna be seasonal winds. Now, there are actually two kinds of monsoons. There's gonna be the dry monsoon and the wet monsoon. And what we're going to see, is, and we can see the arrows going here. So the dry monsoons, they come in the winter. And they're coming north over from the Himalayan mountains. So we're going to have a lot of dry wind coming over there, drying the place. But in the summertime, it's kind of like a rainy season with the monsoons. And we have them coming from the Arabian Sea uh, and from the Indian Ocean. And it's going to give them tons and tons of rainfall, which is going to make it so that they're going to be able to grow lots and lots of crops, which is going to be awesome. We're also going to be talking about several rivers in our unit about India today. Uh, the most important two are going to be the Ganges River, which is going to be uh, over here. And of course, the Indus River, which is going to be over there. There are way more rivers than that. But for the purposes of our studies uh, this year, that's what we're going to be focusing on, the Indus River and the Ganges River. All right. And today, and for the next couple of days, primarily just the Indus River, because that's where our first civilizations are going to be. Any questions or comments thus far? You all right, bud? Okay. Seeing them. I just blown up just showing this. One of the things, so from looking at this map, what can we see about a lot of the geography. What, what are some other things that you might notice in here that I did not mention on the first slide? Uh, yes, Kirthana, darling. India is a peninsula. All right, fantastic. It is a peninsula. In fact, it is such a large peninsula, it's often called a subcontinent because it has its own tectonic plate, which is pretty cool. 
And that's actually probably how the, the Himalayan mountains were formed because the tectonic plate that India is under along with the tectonic plate over here, they're smushing up against each other. So yep, peninsula, what are some other aspects about the geography that I have not mentioned yet? We'll see a lot of it's above sea level. We see we've got the Deccan Plateau, so a high raised air. There are going to a area, excuse me, there's going to be a uh, desert as well. South here, this is going to be another protection going in um, and many more rivers like we talked about. It's a lot of cool stuff in India. So, in this valley right here, like I said, present day country of Pakistan. And we're gonna need to know two, so you could skip this second bullet, it's kind of silly because it's duh. The two places we're gonna be focusing on are Harappa, which is going to be this blue star, and Mohenjadaro, and, uh, the, which is the red star. And they're going to be two pretty awesome spots and we're gonna learn a lot about Harappa and Mohenjadaro these next couple days. And that, my cherubs, is actually going to be our notes for the day. I know, super duper short, right? So I am stuck.